Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be going over some different examples on how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. While you don't have to like solving exponential and logarithmic equations, you can go ahead and like this video. By liking this video, you're helping the YouTube algorithm connect this video to other people looking for some help with exponential and log equations. I've broken down this video into three different levels of exponential equations and three different levels of logarithmic equations. Before we start, let me just show you a couple important bits of information that will be helpful when you're solving these equations. First, b to the log base b of x power is always going to equal x. When the base of the exponent and the base of the log match, they cancel out. For example, if you have 5 to the log base 5 of 10, this cancels out and you're just left with 10. Similarly, when you have e to the ln of x, since ln of x has a base of e, these will cancel out and you're left with x. Also, if you have log base b of b, that just simplifies down to 1. Keep in mind that when you see a log function but you don't see a base, it's always 10 by default. Log of 10, or log base 10 of 10, is equal to 1. And finally, when you take ln of e, that's also equal to 1 because the base for natural logarithms is e. ln of e, or ln base e of e, is equal to 1. If you need to write some of these rules down or take a screenshot, go ahead and you can use them throughout the video. I encourage you to pause the video whenever you need to to try some of the problems on your own, but of course, you can just always play the video through and we can do them together. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, let's take a look at solving some exponential equations by using logarithms. For this first problem, we have five to the two x minus three power is equal to 18. At the end of the day, keep in mind that this two x minus three has to be equal to something that's less than two, because if it was equal to two, five to the second power would equal 25. And since 18 on the other side is less than 25, this 2x minus 3 must be equal to something that's less than 2. Our goal here is to solve for this x, but we need to do something to get it down from being in the exponent first. When solving exponential equations, it's really important to note what the base is. Since this base is 5, we're going to take log base 5 of both sides. Now that we have a logarithm, try to think back to your log properties and remember that you can take an exponent and bring it down in front to multiply by the logarithm. Bringing this 2x minus 3 down in front, we can write the quantity of 2x minus 3 times log base 5 of 5. Now if you're wondering why we specifically took log base 5 of both sides, it's because this cancels out to make 1. Since log base 5 of 5 is just equal to 1, on the left side we can just write 2x minus 3. On the right side, let's rewrite this log base 5 of 18 to something that's a little bit easier to put into a calculator. Using the change of base formula, we can just write log of 18 divided by log of 5. Whenever you're solving logarithms, keep in mind that you can always rewrite logs this way. Since I didn't write the base, keep in mind that it's by default going to be a 10. When you use the change of base formula, you can choose any base you want to use though, and it'll still work. Since when you press log on the calculator, it's log base 10 by default, I'm just not gonna write it here. Putting this into a calculator, we should get about 1.795889. Now that we've gotten rid of the exponents and the logarithms, we can just solve this like a normal two-step equation. Adding three to both sides, we get 2x is about 4.795889, and dividing both sides by 2, we find that x is about 2.398. If you want to, take this value of about 2.4 and plug it in for x and see if you do get about 18. Now let's try solving this equation where we have e to the 4x minus 9 power is equal to 56. To solve for this x, we're going to have to get this 4x minus 9 down from the exponent. To do that, we're going to have to take the natural logarithm or ln of both sides. We're specifically using ln because the base of ln is e. If you ever need to write it, go ahead, but otherwise I'm just going to get rid of it here. Just like in the last example, once we have a logarithm, we can bring the exponent down in front to multiply by the log, and we'll have the quantity of 4x minus 9 times ln of e is equal to ln of 56. Hopefully you can now see why we took ln of both sides, because ln of e, or ln base e of e, is just equal to 1. This is helpful because we can now get rid of the e. Dropping the 1, we can say 4x minus 9 is equal to the natural logarithm, or ln, of 56. Putting this into a calculator, we find that 4x minus 9 is approximately 4.02535. Solving this like a normal equation, let's add 9 to both sides, and we find that 4x is about 13.02535, and we divide both sides by 4, and we find that x is about 3.256. Hopefully these types of problems make a little bit more sense now. In example 2, let's look at some slightly harder examples. If you felt okay with the last two examples, I promise these ones aren't too bad. Let's start with this one, where we have 5 plus 6 to the 2x minus 9 power is equal to 14. Before we can do anything with exponents or logs, 
we need to isolate this term and move this 5 to the other side of the equation. Subtracting 5 from both sides, we're left with 6 to the 2x minus 9 power on the left side and 14 minus 5 is equal to 9. At this point, if you want to try this on your own, give the video a pause because it looks like the first two problems we did in example 1. To get this down from being an exponent, we're going to take log base 6 of both sides. Now that we have a logarithm, we can bring this exponent down in front, and we get the quantity of 2x minus 9 multiplied by log base 6 of 6 is equal to log base 6 of 9. At this point, remember that log base 6 of 6 is just equal to 1. We can then simplify this and not write the 1, and the left side just simplifies down to 2x minus 9. And on the right side, let's use the change of base formula to rewrite log base 6 of 9. Rewriting it, we can write log of 9 over log of 6. If you're not sure what the base is, keep in mind that when you don't see a base, it's a 10 by default. If you want to choose a different number for the base, you're always welcome to when you use this formula. Putting log of 9 over log of 6 into a calculator, we approximately get 1.2263. Adding 9 to both sides, we're then going to get 2x is approximately equal to 10.2263, and dividing both sides by 2, we get that x is about 5.6131. Now let's try this equation where we have 4 ninths times e to the negative 3x power plus 7 is equal to 35. Let's try to get this power by itself. Our first goal here is going to be getting this e to the negative 3x power by itself. We'll start by subtracting 7 from both sides. So on the left side, we'll just have 4 ninths e to the negative 3x power, and on the right side, 35 minus 7 is equal to 28. Then to get rid of the 4 ninths, we can multiply both sides by 9 fourths, so all of this will cancel out on the left side to make 1. And on the right side, we can write 28 as 28 over 1, and 4 and 28 will cross cancel to make 7 and 1. So this simplifies down to e to the negative 3x power is equal to 63. Now to solve for this x, remember that we need to get this negative 3x down from being in the exponent. And to do that, we're going to have to take the natural logarithm or ln of both sides. And just to be super clear, we're taking ln of both sides because ln or natural log is base e. Now that we have a logarithm, we can use a log property and move this negative 3x down in front, and we have negative 3x times ln of e is equal to ln of 63. Since this is just equal to 1, we can write negative 3x times 1 is equal to ln of 63. And dropping the 1, we can write negative 3x, and putting an ln of 63 into the calculator, we get approximately 4.1431. And finally, dividing both sides by negative 3, we get that x is approximately negative 1.3810. While these two problems had a couple extra steps, keep in mind that once you got the power by itself, it was just like the problems in example one. In example three, let's try solving this more complicated equation. We have seven to the three x minus five power is equal to two to the x plus one power. What makes solving this equation more challenging is the fact that we have two powers this time and their bases are different. Let's try solving this equation together. Let's start by taking log of both sides. And while you can choose any base, I'm going to choose to take log base 7 of both sides. For this particular equation, it makes sense to either use base 7 or base 2 because those are the bases of the powers. Now that we have logarithms, this 3x minus 5 can come in front, and this x plus 1 can also come in front. Rewriting this, we'll have the quantity of 3x minus 5 times log base 7 of 7 is equal to the quantity of x plus 1 times log base 7 of 2. Log base 7 of 7 is just equal to 1, so you can simplify this to the quantity of 3x minus 5 times 1. Looking at the right side here, we can distribute this log base 7 of 2 to both of these terms inside the parentheses. We get x times log base 7 of 2 plus 1 times log base 7 of 2. To solve for x, we're going to have to get the terms that have x on the same side. And to do that, we're going to subtract x times log base 7 of 2 from both sides. Now we'll have 3x minus x times log base 7 of 2 minus 5 is equal to log base 7 of 2. Let's add 5 to both sides and we get 3x minus x times log base 7 of 2 is equal to log base 7 of 2 plus 5. Since both of the terms on the left side have a common factor of x, we can factor out the x and write x times the quantity of 3 minus log base 7 of 2 is equal to log base 7 of 2 plus 5. And to isolate the x, we can then divide both sides by 3 minus log base 7 of 2, and we get that x is equal to log base 7 of 2 plus 5 over 3 minus log base 7 of 2. While this is the exact answer, you can plug it into a calculator and you'll find that x is approximately equal to 2.026. Equations like this are typically a little bit more challenging just because they have different bases for their powers. Now that we've practiced solving exponential equations using logarithms, now let's practice solving logarithmic equations using exponents. Let's look at this equation where we have log base 3 of the quantity of 8x minus 15 is equal to 4. 
To get rid of this log base 3 on the left side, you have to focus on the base of the logarithm, which is 3 here. Now that you're focused on the base being 3, we're going to rewrite the left and right side as exponents with bases of 3 on both sides. And again, we're specifically choosing 3 because that's the base of the logarithm. On the left side here, 3 to the log base 3 power is going to cancel out, and we're left with 8x minus 15 on the left side, and we can multiply out this 3 to the 4th power to get 81. Then we can add 15 to both sides, and we'll get 8x is equal to 96. And finally, dividing both sides by 8, we find that x is equal to 12. Now that we have our answer, remember that you can always substitute it back into the original equation to see if it works. For logarithmic equations, it's always a good idea to plug in your solution to make sure you don't have a negative number here. Since 8 times 12 is 96, and 96 minus 15 is definitely a positive number, I know that this is going to be okay. If you happen to get a negative solution, remember it's an extraneous solution and you can cross it out. Now let's look at this equation where we have log base 2 of the quantity of x plus 2 plus log base 2 of 3 is equal to log base 2 of 27. While this equation does look a little bit scary, I promise you that since all the terms have log base 2, it's not going to be too bad. You want to try to remember that when you're adding two logarithms with the same base, that we can condense this and write log base 2 of 3 times the quantity of x plus 2. Whenever you're adding two logarithms with the same base, you can condense it as a product. Now let's get rid of the logarithms by looking at the base of them. Since we have a base of 2, we're going to rewrite both sides of the equation with 2 as the base. Remember that this right here is going to cancel out, and actually this over here will also cancel out. That leaves us with 3 times the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to 27. Next we're going to distribute this 3 to this x and this 2, and we'll get 3x plus 6 is equal to 27. Subtracting both sides by 6, we're left with 3x is equal to 21. And finally, dividing both sides by 3, we get that x is equal to 7. And just to make sure we don't have any extraneous solutions, plugging in this 7 over here, we're going to get a positive value, so we're good to go. In example 5, let's practice solving some more difficult logarithmic equations. Let's start with this equation on the left. First, notice that on the right side, we have the sum of two logarithms with the same base. The first thing we're going to do here is condense the right side into one logarithm. After condensing the right side, now we just have one ln on each side of the equation. Now let's just multiply these two binomials and basically FOIL. After FOILing, we're going to get this expression here, and we can combine these like terms to get this expression right here. Now that we can't simplify anymore, let's try to get rid of the lns. Since ln is base e, our next step here is to use e as a base and exponentiate on both sides. By using e, each of the e to the ln cancels out, and we're left with 3x is equal to negative 4x squared plus 3x plus 1. At this point, let's just solve this like a quadratic equation. To do so, let's subtract 3x from both sides so we can get a trinomial equal to 0. After subtracting, we actually get 0 is equal to negative 4x squared plus 1, and since we have no b term, we can actually solve by using square roots. We can subtract 1 from both sides, and we get negative 1 is equal to negative 4x squared. And dividing both sides by negative 4, we get 1 fourth is equal to x squared. Then taking the square root of both sides, we find that x is equal to positive 1 half or negative 1 half. Now that we have our solutions, remember that it's important to check to see if we have extraneous solutions. Just because we got two solutions algebraically doesn't mean they're actually going to work in our function. This 1 half over here is okay because you get a positive value. It's also okay over here because we'll still have a positive value, as well as over here. The issue with this negative 1 half is if we plug it in over here, 3 times negative 1 half gets us a negative value, which means that x equals negative 1 half is actually an extraneous solution, and we're just going to leave our answer as x is equal to positive 1 half. Now let's check out this equation on the right. First notice that we have a sum of logs on the left side, and we can condense this because they have the same base of 3. Condensing the left side, we now have log base 3 of x times the quantity of x minus 2 is equal to log base 3 of the quantity of x plus 10. Now that we just have one logarithm on each side, and they're both base 3, we'll be able to cancel out the logarithms if we exponentiate both sides with a base of 3. Each of these will cancel out, and we're left with x times the quantity of x minus 2 is equal to x plus 10. Next, if we distribute here, we'll get x squared minus 2x is equal to x plus 10. Subtracting x from both sides, we get x squared minus 3x is equal to 10, and subtracting 10 from both sides, we get x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. Just like the last example, we get a quadratic equation so we can either factor it or use the quadratic formula. 
Since it does happen to be factorable, I'm going to factor into the quantity of x minus 5 times the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to 0. And the two values that make this true are x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 2. Now let's check for extraneous solutions. If we put this 5 in over here, that's going to be okay because it's positive. Plugging in this 5 over here, that's also going to be positive. As well as 5 over here, we're still going to be positive. However, for this negative 2, we're going to get a negative value here and even a negative value over here. So we can say that x equals negative 2 is an extraneous solution, so our final answer is just going to be x is equal to 5. Some key takeaways for these types of equations is that you can have two solutions if you're dealing with a quadratic equation, and it's always important to check for extraneous solutions. And finally, here's example 6, where we're going to solve a more difficult logarithmic equation. The reason why equations like this give people more trouble is because they have logarithms with different bases. Since these logs have different bases, we can't do any condensing. However, the trick we're going to have to use here is the change of base formula. Using the change of base formula, we can rewrite this log base 9 of 4 as log base b of 4 over log base b of 9. For now, I'm just using this variable b to represent the base because when you use the change of base formula, you can choose any value here that you'd like to use. Besides that, we still have the plus log base 3 of x is equal to 3. So if we're allowed to choose any base we want, what number should we choose? The key here is to choose a base that's going to match the other base we already have. In this case, we have a 3. Rewriting this, we have log base 3 of 4 over log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of x is equal to 3. This denominator is actually pretty nice here. Remember that log base 3 of 9 really just means how many 3s do you multiply to get 9. Since 3 times 3 is equal to 9, or we just need 2 of these 3s, log base 3 of 9 is just equal to 2. Knowing that log base 3 of 9 is just equal to 2, we can write log base 3 of 4 over 2 plus log base 3 of x is equal to 3. Instead of dividing by 2 and having a fraction, let's rewrite this so instead of dividing by 2, we're just going to multiply this log base 3 of 4 by 1 half. This way we don't have to deal with a fraction, and we can use our log property and move this 1 half up as an exponent for this 4. Continuing this problem up here, we're going to have log base 3 of 4 to the 1 half power plus log base 3 of x is equal to 3. Now that we have the sum of two logarithms with the same base, we can now condense them. Condensing the left side, we can write log base 3 of 4 to the 1 half power times x is equal to 3. Since 4 to the 1 half power just means the square root of 4, we can simplify that down to just being 2. Now to get rid of this log base 3, we can use that base of 3 and exponentiate on both sides. This way, this 3 to the log base 3 will cancel out, and we're left with 2x on the left side, and 3 to the third power on the right side is 3 times 3 times 3, which equals 27. Finally, dividing both sides by 2, we find that x is equal to 27 halves. And that wraps up this last example. In summary, it's important for you to realize that we use logarithms to solve exponential equations, and to solve logarithmic equations, we need to use exponents. While there are a lot of different log properties to remember, keep in mind that the more you practice them, the easier they're going to get. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment sections below. As always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.